Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video, we're gonna be doing another altar transformation. This time, we're gonna be taking my peaceful altar from last month and turning it into a Samhain altar. <music> Now for those of you who have been on this channel for a while, you have seen many altar transformations and this one is similar to all the others. If you would like to see the others that I've done in the past for altar inspiration, I will link the playlist up here if you are interested. Now this Sabbath's altar is going to be my Samhain altar. It's my favourite altar of the year. I just love Halloween, which is why I'm currently wearing a bat dress. <laughs> I love Halloween, always have, probably always will. And so Samhain is one of my all time favourite favorite Sabbaths. Now the last altar that I did was a little bit different than usual. It was for peaceful transformations. It was a manifestation altar. Today we're going to be dismantling that and replacing it with my Samhain or Halloween altar. Now I get a lot of questions every month about what type of altar it is. Do I actually do workings there? What's it for? Especially the Sabbath altars that I do, those being for occasions such as Beltane, Samhain, Yule, Imbolc, whatever it might be, they are simply seasonal representation altars. I do my spell work and ritual wherever I need to, wherever I can. So that could be outside, that could be sitting on my office floor, that could be sitting on the sofa in my living room. I don't do all of my workings in one place or in one location. I scatter them around depending on what I need and what I have access to. The altars that I show on here are usually seasonal representation altars or their manifestation alters after they've done their work. So this altar in particular is for representation of the Samhain season, that being what we now refer to as Halloween. But this altar does have a little bit of a difference in that it's going to be simultaneously Samhain as well as an ancestral altar. Now in the past, I have split these two altars up. I've done one altar that's an ancestor veneration altar and I've done another that is a Samhain altar, except Life means my house isn't really that big. I don't have that much space to set up two altars for this particular season. So instead, I'm actually going to do my best to combine a Samhain altar with an Ancestor Veneration altar and alter them both slightly so that they suit each other and they can work well together. So I'm hoping that at the end of this, I'm gonna have a few Halloween decorations because I love me a good pumpkin. I'm hoping to have some representations of the Sabbath and the season, but then hopefully I will also manage to fit in some offerings and some representation for those that have gone before as well, and also representing the thinning of the veil. So really, I'm trying to fit a lot onto one on altar. And this is something that you can do if it's appropriate. So during Samhain, it's the time when the veil is thinning between our world and the realms of spirits. And so it's really easy to merge together a Samhain altar and an ancestor veneration altar. It's a similar time during Beltane as well. So if you are setting up a Beltane altar, you can do a similar thing because once again, the veil is thin during the Beltane season. However, if you are planning on combining altars, please always make sure that the energies are going to be suitable for one another. You don't want energies that are gonna be clashing and making it difficult for either to manifest. And you also don't want to be adding spirits and deities onto an altar if they don't feel comfortable doing that. So during my transformations altar last season, I set that altar up with a statue for Keridwen. Now Keridwen is one of my deities. She is a deity of transformation and so, her energy in that space made a lot of sense because it was an altar for peaceful transformation. But if, for instance, you wanted to work a love working and you choose a war deity, they're not necessarily going to go well together. So it's really important to connect with the spirits that you're working with, connect with the deities that you're working with, and tie them in appropriately because not all intentions are going to work well together and not all spirits and deities are going to work together either. Now, for the most part, these videos are time lapse. And as always, the music is usually listed in the description box, though it's typically free for commercial use stock music. So it's not exactly the most entertaining music imaginable, but I'll see what I can do to 
try and make something that's pretty nice for you to watch. So you can see me setting up my altar as I'm doing it. Now there's one thing I do want to say beforehand and that is that although these altars look as though they take no time at all to set up, most of the altars take several days, if not weeks, of planning beforehand. And for ease of filming, I also set aside all of the items in advance, so I know exactly what's going to go on the altar when I take everything off again. Setting up an altar doesn't have to be an instantaneous event. It's not quick, and it doesn't have to be done all in one go. You can set an altar up in a few hours, or a few days, a few months, adding bits and pieces to it as and when you see fit, but for the purposes of videos, I speed up the process and I also make it easier for me to film by setting aside all of the items. This doesn't necessarily represent how I would set an altar up if I didn't have a camera filming. It does change how you go about working things to work around cameras and lighting. So if you can't set an altar up in five minutes, that's pretty normal. Most people can't do that. It's just usually the footage is spread up around four times and I also have everything laid out in advance. So with that all being said, let's go set up this altar and hopefully I can squish all of these intentions into one place. This is the altar all set up. It is very different than I maybe expected it to turn out, but I'm so, so happy with it. So there's one last thing I need to add on, and that is actually some incense. Now in this house, I have very sensitive fire alarms. So I'll occasionally burn loose incense and have it smoke. Now anyone who burns a lot of loose incense will know it smokes a lot and so I often use oil warmers. Now these are for wax melts or they're for um, oil diffusion and I'll actually use these with my loose incense. You've probably seen me do this before. 
So this is a Samhain loose incense that I picked up recently and I've been so excited to use it, but I wanted to wait till this altar was all set up. So I'm just gonna take a small amount and I'm gonna tip it into the dish at the top so that it will release the fragrance of the resins and the herbs without having all of the smoke, which is so useful if you do have difficulties with smoke, if you do have five alarms, if you're not allowed to smoke inside or have any kind of incense inside. It can be a good option because it's a smoke-free alternative. Now, of course, you are still getting the essence of the plant, so you're not gonna want to do this if you're allergic to any plants or anything, but generally speaking, as long as you're okay with plants, this is a really good option. Now, that amount that I've put in there will do me the entire season. I will not need to top that up. I still have all of this incense, like it's barely gone down a centimeter because by heating it in this way, you aren't actually destroying the plant. You're simply heating it, you're warming it, you're creating um, aroma from the oils in the plants and the herbs and the resins, but you're not actually destroying them, which is super useful, especially if you don't wanna keep buying loose incense because loose incense is quite expensive. You can do this instead and it's just a great way of making the house smell amazing and seasonal without it costing you a fortune by burning all of your incense. So that being said, that is now my completed Samhain altar and I have to say it might actually be my favourite altar I've done. This entire year I just love autumnal colours, I love the earthy browns and the oranges, oh I just love it, it's so nice. So we'll start with the biggest item, which is my stag print. Now, as I've mentioned in previous altar setups, as the year starts becoming autumnal, we start getting into rutting season. And so I really enjoy using the stag figure to represent this time of year. Now this print I did get from an artist on Redbubble. I will link the item and the artist in the description box so that if you would like this print, you can get it the full print looks like that and it's so beautiful. I love having it out at this time of year. Now on this altar are two cards. Now these cards have been chosen specifically for the Samhain season. So the first one is the Jack-o'-lantern, which is such a beautiful card. I love using it at this time of year. And then the veil. Now the veil classically thins at Beltane and at Samhain, and now it is Samhain, it's the perfect time to be representing this aspect of the world on an altar. And this card is stunning. It's probably the most beautiful card out of the entire deck. And I love having it out at this time just to represent the veil thinning aspect, the connection or the closer connection with ancestors. It's just a really, really beautiful card. And for anyone wondering, to actually stand these up, I'm using an Ikea phone stand. <laughs> these are really affordable from Ikea, they're made of bamboo, and I simply place it down. You have to get the angle right, and it can be a bit finicky, but once you do, the cards stand up, and it allows you to put it on the altar. Both of these cards are from the same deck. They are from the Halloween Oracle, which is a gorgeous set of cards. Every single card in this deck is related to the Halloween season. So we have a card for ancestors. We have one for trick or treating. Let's have a look at some of the others. You've got zombie as a card. You also have the underworld. These are so beautiful. I only bring them out at this time of year, but they are gorgeous to put on Samhain altars and they're just really nice to do as daily draws for this time of year. Plus the guidebook actually gives you information on the meaning behind each card. So why the veil is significant, why jack-o'-lanterns are significant. And so it's a really cute little gift if you know if someone really likes Halloween. I got these because I adore Halloween and I couldn't let them go. Now I'm not sure if you can actually hear it, but the resin is actually melting and it's producing steam and it's actually sizzling. So in person, I can hear it sizzling. Unfortunately, I don't think the microphone is gonna be sensitive enough to pick it up, but it is starting to sizzle and release that steam from the resins and the herbs. So I'm starting to be able to smell the incense now. It's really quick. I mean, I've maybe had this lit for 10 minutes and then about five minutes the incense has been in it so it's a really quick process. Okay, moving on from that, we have a god. Now usually I have goddess statues and I adore my goddess statues. However, we got these in to the online store and I fell in love with him. I absolutely adore him. 
And as I've mentioned in previous videos, I've had Kaunos kind of knocking on the door for the last couple of years now, and I finally decided it was about time to start connecting with him, working with him. And when I saw these horned god statues, I just knew that I had to keep one. So I have one on the altar, and he is currently carrying a clear quartz ball. Now, I did debate whether or not to have a tiger eye sphere or a quartz sphere, but I just found this one looks so mystical. It looks like the classical crystal ball, and so I just had to have him holding that one. So this is actually his first altar outing, and he looks absolutely gorgeous. The other rather large item is my pumpkin. Now, I think in America these are referred to as jack-o'-lanterns. In the UK, they're just carved pumpkins. This is actually not my pumpkin. This is my parents' pumpkin. My parents aren't big celebrators of Halloween. But when I was a kid, I was so obsessed with Halloween, we had to decorate the house every single year. And when I moved out several years ago, I ended up keeping all of their pumpkins because they never liked them. So this is actually a vintage pumpkin. It's a very old pumpkin, and inside are some real spider webs and some real dead spiders because I forgot to clean it before I put it on the altar. <laughs> um, oops. <laughs> so it's even more spooky. It's even more spooky ooky. And then in front and just dotted around we have some of these. Now I found these in my parents garage maybe like 15 years ago and I have no idea where they came from. I don't even think my parents know where they came from. They're like plastic pumpkins and they're so old so I kept them and now I put them on every single Samhain altar that I've ever made because they're just so cute. They kind of ideally represent the different aspects of pumpkins and the different ways they can look and they're just so freaking cute! Now on this side, a little bit hidden, is a pentacle tea light holder and inside is a standard tea light. Now the reason I have that out is that when I'm working with the Samhain season it's very much about working with ancestors, venerating those that came before us, which is why I have the veil card here. Now there was an ancestors card I could have chosen but I didn't really resonate with it in the same way that I resonated with the veil because the thing is, is not all ancestors are mine. And so I really like working with spirits and offering spirits um, offerings during this time of year because some spirits don't have any family that are still around. That you know, they're, they're a bit lost and they don't really know what to do with themselves. So the combination of the veil card and the offering tea light is really to the ancestors. Now, I used to do whole ancestor altars, but over the years I realised I didn't have the space to do both, so now I combine the two. So although this is a Samhain altar, on there are things for ancestors as well. So the candle is in an offering tea light holder, which I use to give offerings to spirits. So the candle is going to be burning in that probably every other day as an offering to spirits. And then the incense also goes to the spirits as well. So every time I burn the incense, that is food and energy for them as well. And then I do also have the card as kind of visual representation of that. Now the last big thing on this altar, I suppose, is my little hearth goddess. She sits back there. She's on all of my altars. You'll have seen her before if you've been on this channel for a while. She's a protection poppet that is used to help offer protection to the home and to the hearth. And she is on all of my altars. This is her home and so I'm not going to move her um, for the purpose of creating an altar. She simply adds onto the space every single time I do an altar. And then the last, last thing, I suppose, are the crystals. Now, there aren't a huge number of crystals. I have two smoky citrine on this altar because I really enjoy that energy. It's quite mysterious and dark, so I really like using that. I have one black obsidian, which is actually hidden in front of the god statue. And then I have three rainbow moonstone because of their association with divination and the fortune telling aspect of this Samhain season. So that is the altar in completion. It isn't actually that complex, but it's really powerful. It feels like a really strong altar this time and I'm so, so happy with how it turned out.
so that is the altar all set up. I am so, so happy with how it turned out. There's definitely a lot of aspects going on, but I think it all ties together, especially with the color scheme, you know, the browns and the oranges and the flames. It really works well together, which I'm very thankful for. Sometimes when you're doing altars that contain a lot of different intentions or associations, it can look a little bit chaotic, like you've just thrown a whole bunch of stuff at a table. So I'm really grateful that all of this came together in a really cohesive way. It actually turned out way, way better than I thought it would. So all in all, super happy with it. And I also really like having the vintage pumpkin on there as well. It's just really nice getting to put those items out. Usually that pumpkin is sitting on a table over here that's covered in books and paperwork and a whole bunch of random stuff. And so it's really nice actually being able to put them out. Now one pumpkin is here and he lives there all the time. That's the more kind of creepy pumpkin. But the really classic pumpkin I only put out during Samhain, so it's really nice getting to have that out. And I also like using cards that I don't use the rest of the year. So the Halloween Oracle I love, but it's not always suitable for the rest of the year because, you know, it's very Halloween-centric and all of the cards essentially are related to Halloween, maybe without two, I think it's about two cards, one for a black cat, and there's one for hearth, like a fireplace, that aren't super Halloween-y, but the rest really are, so I only really use it during this time, and then I finally get to use my brand new Samhain incense, and I'm so happy with it, it smells so, so good, I've got it burning, it's been burning for about two or three hours now, because it's now dark, <laughs> I've been filming for a long, long time today, so my house smells so good, and it's a really good option if you don't necessarily want the smoke that you do get if you burn loose incense as well. So all in all, super chuffed with how it turned out. The god looks amazing. I'm so happy I went with the clear quartz instead of the tiger eye. There was a bit of debate in the middle there. And I was tempted to put some more skulls and some more kind of dead things on there because if you've been here for a while, you will know that I really like collecting ethically sourced skulls. I'm gonna put that in right there. But I do have a few skulls that I really, really love. One of them is back here and I was so tempted to put one on, but I actually don't think it needs it. And I'm really glad that I didn't clutter it up too much because I also have a staff. You couldn't really see it in the video, but I had a staff that's now like living next to my altar. So it's a little bit chaotic. So I didn't want to make it too, too chaotic. But I hope that you did enjoy this altar setup. I feel really in the spooky season mood right now. When I'm filming this, it's currently the 21st of October, so we only have 10 days, which is not enough time. I feel like October has just like vanished. I went from having like two, three months before Halloween to having like 10 days. I don't have time. You know, I just, I don't have time to watch all of the movies and to do all of the things that I wanna do. And I also don't have the ability to go and do a whole bunch of things. I really wish the UK had more Halloween things, you know, like events like haunted houses and corn mazes. We don't have that stuff in the UK. It's really sad. I get to watch a whole bunch of vlogs from people who live in America who have all of that stuff. So it's, I kind of get secondhand experiences by watching that. So with that all being said, I hope that you did enjoy this altar setup. I hope that it maybe inspired you for your own altar. I find it really useful to look at how other people set up their altars to gain inspiration from their particular style, because I think we have a tendency to get stuck in a rut for how we choose to do our altars. And I'm the exact same. I will basically make the same altar like 12 times. So I like trying to do slightly different things and just try and play around with it, so I hope that this did give you some inspiration. Have you already set up your Samhain altar? Are you going to? Are you going to be doing a Samhain altar or an ancestor altar or some combination of the two? Please let me know down in the comment section or just generally chat in the comment section. I always like hearing from you and I basically read every single comment if I can. I spend way too long reading comments. I might not reply, but I'm always watching. I really need to insert that clip from Monsters Inc. in right now, but I'm always watching. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna cut that out probably. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to give it a like. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chat with the community down in the comments, feel free to do that. It's down below. All of the links to products and items and podcasts and social media and all of that stuff is in the description box. If you did enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try my best to as magical content every single week. And there is a podcast episode that is released on my podcast channel through the Blackthorn Arch every single Tuesday. With that all being said, I hope you have a marvellous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.